Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a lovely, lovely morning. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, thank you for taking the time to speak to us and to join us in this conversation. I am super excited to have this conversation with you. Um, I see a, quite a good number of, of participants who will be joining us. Um, and uh, I think we're just going to give everybody a minute or two to come in. Uh, it's exactly 11.01. So we'll give everybody a minute or two to come in. And then we're going to start the session. But we are so excited to talk to you about the partnership between ASEC, UK Tech Hub, and Brighter Bridges, uh, what that entails. We're going to touch on the report that they launched, um, I believe, maybe two weeks ago. Um, and we will look at the opportunities within the ecosystem uh, and what this partnership is looking to uh, to do for us. We hope that you would have ask us any questions that you might have um, so that we can address them. If you're not aware of, of, of who Brighter is or uh, who ASIC or who you have is, then we will be delighted to let you know all about us. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, we're just going to give everybody else a minute or so to come in. Um, and this is, as we do that, I think I'll just allow us to say hello. This is part of our, let me ask that we mute ourselves. Um, yeah, so we're just going to do quick hellos uh, in the next minute or two uh, as everybody joins in so that we can start off the session. Uh, my name is Brenda Kibiku. I am the head of programs at ASEC. Uh, super delighted to be speaking to you. Uh, you will. I'll introduce the speaker, uh, or rather, uh, the, the person I'll be having this conversation with uh, in a minute. But now, um, I want to to introduce or to invite our member engagement advisor. I see she's on the call, Merci. If you could say a quick hello, uh, talk a little bit about what member engagement at ASEC is um, and what we are doing to ensure that our members are part of the community and we can converse with them. Merci. Hi everyone, thank you, Brenda. Hi everyone, good morning, good morning to you all. It's the last week of January. I know it's the 75th day of the calendar. So we're really happy to have you here. Uh, my name is Masi Kimalat. I'm the member engagement advisor for ASEC. And really just alongside the role with Brenda, we are here to support you to ensure that we expose you to different opportunities, uh, network opportunities, partnerships, um, and also just to support you in terms of capacity building uh, with the also other capacity building <laughs> advisors just to ensure that you have a holistic experience here at ASEC. Our role is really to, to be a listening ear to you all as our, as our members and hopefully uh, the new members who are here and prospective as well, and to just guide you through your entrepreneurship support journey to the other entrepreneurs. So I'll leave it to Brenda to introduce ASEC and also our key objectives. But thank you and happy to be here. Thank you so much, Marcy. Um, it, 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 she's given a good overview of, of, of what our member engagement activities look like. Um, and I can see a lot of names that are quite familiar uh, with, who, with who ASIC is. I see a lot of our members represented. I also see some regional a lot of regional hubs as part of this conversation. So I'm very, very excited. I see some lawyers in this in this uh, house uh, and I'm so excited. We can bring in the perspective uh, on, on, on the report and what the platform looks like um, and what it means for all of us to be part of that. So I'm very, very excited. I see so many members, um, but, and I won't bore you with the details of who ASEC is, because I'm sure we are, we are all familiar with, 
with with the association uh, we've interacted with a lot of you um but just to to briefly touch on that uh, for 2021 we are quite com committed in ensuring that our members feel seen they feel heard they feel as part of a community being a network is exactly that uh where different people come together to share um, common interest, uh, shared value, and how can we create collective um, bargaining power as the members of ASEC, as a community, um, as part of the ecosystem. And I'm quite excited that uh, most of you have taken the time to have this conversation with us, to be part of this network. And I'm quite excited by by the names I'm seeing uh, on my screen. So thank you so much for taking the time. I think that's enough uh, time to allow for everybody to join. And then we will, I think we can start so that we are on the same page. We are we're on time and cover everything um, in good time. Um, so I will, I'm just moving a few things on my screen. Just bear with me a little bit before we begin. I see more people joining, so they will. We will. We will. We will go on, and we can have the conversation. So, my chair, uh, the chair of ASEC, Mr. Bernard Shira, um, registers his apologies. Unfortunately, he had to attend another meeting, uh, but we are well represented, or rather, he's well represented with. Uh, by some board members on this call. I see our board secretary, uh, Grace Washori, um, uh, who will say a quick hello at the end of this conversation. I also see Ann Salim just joining. She'll also say a quick hello at the end of this conversation. So we'll get right into it. Um, and, and, and I will invite uh, the smart one uh, of the two of us, who will go into the details of who Brighter is, uh, what they do, um, uh, give a brief of what this conversation is, uh, who he is, and then we will get into 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 everything. So, Joshua Morima, please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, who Brighter is, and what Brighter does. Exciting. Now, um, thank you, everyone. My name is Joshua Muruma, as, as aptly introduced by, by Brenda. Um, and I sit in Nairobi uh, leading Brighter's efforts in engaging the ecosystem. So uh, just to put it briefly, Brighter is a data-driven research um, firm that was set up um, in about two years ago. So our whole mantra has been to uh, bridge the knowledge divide between um, you know, the developed world and the emerging ecosystems. And um, our first or main way of doing this has been to visualize um, in a very simple manner um, the innovations that are coming out of um, these emerging ecosystems. And we are so excited to get on to, into this partnership with ASEC and the UK Kenya Tech Hub with this, you know, um, vision, which is sort of in line with what we do to actually showcase um, you know, the Kenyan e uh, support ecosystem and innovation ecosystem as a whole. So very excited to be here and looking forward to a fruitful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Tisha. Thank you so much for that. Um, <clears throat> I'll just give a background of this partnership with UK Tech Hub so we're, that we're on the same page. Uh, Joshua has talked about this, the, what, uh, uh, what Brighter does, and we'll get to hear more from Dario, um, but just before we do that, I'll, a quick background on this partnership was uh, a need. Uh, we had conversations with different stakeholders, and we identified a need in looking at a centralized platform that would capture opportunities within the ecosystem, as well as identify who is doing what, where where are they doing this, what 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 
do different hubs offer and this will allow entrepreneurs to go onto the platform and identify um, uh, services if it's acceleration uh, if it's incubation where can they find that so in which hub which hub offers that and I think that uh, really allows us to have a centralized place for the ecosystem to uh, to capture this information, and UK Tech Hub was very uh, was was key in driving this and supporting this. And ASEC is playing the role of highlighting this to the ecosystem and allowing them to understand uh, the, the 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 potential and the possibilities of this, and to also rally the the membership and the ecosystem to be part of this. Uh, we are happy to clarify um any any questions that we might have uh but just that's a quick background of what the partnership is about um so for just so we're on the same page i am delighted excited to invite dario to introduce himself mm -hmm. and to introduce to maybe speak a little in more into detail of who uh brighter is um and what they are doing in this ecosystem in this regional ecosystem thanks brenda uh, morning everyone uh, thanks Jeff, for introducing um i can see a bunch of familiar faces or familiar names in here um so the reason why we set up this webinar is is essentially you, you know aim it to aim it to uh, specific reasons. One is actually familiarizing wow. with this consortium, which is ASEC, the UK Canada Tech Hub, and Brighter, and what the collaboration is um, aimed at. And second, to really understand and clear some doubts around what the tools that we've developed and, and the way the tool will develop over the next few months um, could actually be used by the ecosystem. Um, I'm going to share a screen. Um, but also, I'm going to share with the over actually over here in the chat. Probably is, is, is a wise way to get everyone to play with it. Let me just check. Um, so I share the uh, how-to guidelines that we build for the brighter intelligence, which should make life easier for uh, for everyone. And we just updated the guidelines for everyone to be able to check with the assessment tool. Again, the assessment tool is very much a living organism. So, as you know, as you tell us what data point could be interesting and could be valuable, you know, for for company assessment or for supporters, and you know, we'll be adding those over the course of the next few weeks and next few months, um, in order to make you know you know the tool and, and the interaction with the ecosystem strong. Let me just share my screen. Mm. Can anyone see the? Can anyone see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Super. Okay. So the, the brighter intelligence is. I won't. I won't be pitching too much about intelligence. The, the long story short of of this tool is that we, for those who are familiar with brighter, we basically digitized last year. We launched. You know, last year we launched this platform, brighter intelligence, which is aimed at digitizing the body of data that we've developed over time and which would enable more interaction, more flexibility, more updatability of the data. Um, so what the, the, there, there are a number of, of functionalities on this platform and a number of different categories that we've developed in order for, you know, for, for, for any type of stakeholder to or any type of user to to be able to navigate this you know, digital world. So as you can see here, we have a very uh, very simple interface. And obviously, for those who are familiar with our innovation maps, you can see that there's a resemblance with um, the style of the maps that we've uh, developed. If you can see other countries, because for those who don't know it, Brighter has actually been working across emerging markets for another for, for at least a, a year. And, and we've been working on, on emerging market strategies with a number of pa partners and, and clients. And the idea is to really create a pan emerging market platform. Africa, though, remains our continent of interest. 
for the moment. And we, we haven't really deployed data on, you know, from, from other regions. So in, in, in this main interface, you can see an interactive filter. We're actually adding more data points, more slots. So you're really able to filter by uh, any type of data point that we have on the platform and not just the core ones. Um, in, on the sidebar, we have something that we call the ecosystem clock. And effectively, these, ecos the, these figures um, adjust to any sort of query that you might run any point, right, in any point. So if you, if you only want to look at companies as opposed to looking at hubs, investors, or, or you know, charities and NGOs, you can, see that, you can see that the numbers over here adjust. And then if you want to narrow it down to the, to the companies that are only active across Africa, you see a further adjustment of these of, of, of this numbers. So you can see how many sectors, how many products. Um, you can see the, num the, the amount of investment that has been deployed over the course of 2020 and 2021. We will be adjusting it sh uh, surely to 2021 only. So we keep the consistency to, to it being the funding clock of the, of the year. Um, and then again, you know, if you want to you know, narrow it down to any specific sector, the platform will adjust even further, or, or you want to look at companies specifically being founded in, 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 a, in a specific year that would do. As you can see, like 383 companies registered on the, company, on, on the platform across one sector, because that's the one we selected, uh, offering um, over 100 products, right? Now, let me undo this so you can see the, the, the second part of the interface. So when you scroll down, um, you can see that Again, the entire interface obviously is, uh, is, is interactive and adjusts to whatever query you perform. And so, as you can see here, we have um, a simple data visualization interface that looks at the top countries by number of companies that are registered on the platform. Obviously, you can see the innovation time on the Nigeria and Egypt. Um, the sector breakdown, a bit of gaming around here. Because we work with a lot of impact investors, uh, foundations, governments, we've also added, and I'll show you in a minute, the, the tracker. This is a sustainable development goal tracker and an impact tracker that you can find in the filter. And so it looks at, the, the, you know, the, obviously, the, the SDGs that each company has selected or that we've selected according to what we understand um, as you know, as, as the core products of, of, of each company, um, and then the same pattern on, on the product side. So here we can see that you know payment remains one of the uh, one one of the most spread and, and most common products. Then if you scroll down, last summer we added this month over month investment tracker that actually looks at. We'll be adding twenty twenty one next week. And that looks at the investment trends per month over the course of the last few years. I think we'll be adding up to five years. So we'll really show how half a decade has been when it comes to funding developments. And this adjusts to what you can see here, which deals. For those who've seen our end of the year report, which we launched a couple of weeks ago, which is freely available on our website, we've deployed all our funding data onto this deals um, um, section, which I'll show you in a minute. Again, this is actually completely freely accessible. And you can see, and this is what powers these charts. And again, this adjusts to anything. So if you just want to look at like financial technology, for instance, you can see that you know, these charts adjust to that. Um, and, and this should give you, you know, you can literally like, screen shoot it and add it to your presentation whenever you're doing for instance a specific um, you, know, you know pitch deck or whatever presentation you're doing about a specific sector. And finally, at the bottom of the interface, you can see the list view. Now the list view obviously is only um, it's, it's capped to a maximum of 15 or 20 uh, organization per query, which means you can run unlimited queries but you cannot have full access to the list as a, as a free user. But this is not necessarily 
uh, you're concerned because by using the platform in, in, in a flexible, sorry, uh, yeah, it just adjusts. It's my laptop is pretty slow this morning, but um, you can see that you know the investment tracker um, trends has adjusted to only think that way. Anyway, I was saying um, by using the queries in the filter and using the filter properly, you'd be able to access a quite extensive uh, number of organizations already fun, um, all, all, across all categories. And especially, we didn't cap or we didn't block the direct search. So if you want to look at the I have, you know, you can you can always find direct access to a company profile, right? So you can see you enter the profile and you can see this is specifically a hub profile, it's a category hub, uh, status active, provide funding, what type it is, um, a number of um, basic information about contacts, uh, country operation, whether there's any sector of interest or, or very specific subsector of interest, et cetera, et cetera. Um, at any point, I guess you can interrupt me and ask questions. It's, I'm, I'm getting to the assessment tool in a second. I just wanted to give you uh, a better understanding because a lot of people have asked how to actually use the platform, especially hub managers. So I hope this um, is, is making the process clearer. So for instance, if we wanted to look at, um, I don't know, possession for instance, um, we, could, we could directly go into possession profile by searching the company name. And, this, and the, again, this gives you access to the same profile. It's slightly different from obviously the, the, the hub profile because it looks at different data points. We look at the funding history of a company and you can directly enter the, the, the investor profile. There's a, an element of management team. Um, there's an impact indicators in case that this company specifically addresses any uh, impact indicators, the documentation that can be added. And this is one of... This is one of our, I think, most exciting functions because at first it's free and it's, a, it's an automatically generated uh, market assessment. So competition market landscape and competition assessment um, tab that looks at the, the, you know, the competitors, similar companies based on the countries of operation of this, of this specific company profile and also other countries. So not the same countries of operation, but other countries where companies are offering a similar product. And this synchronizes with the subsectors of the product and again, the countries of operation. Sorry, I just I like- Dario, uh, before we continue, let me, uh, before we continue, um, let me invite the, the, the audience, the participants to just type in their questions in the chat box if you have any. And also you can send the questions directly to, to me and I will, I will ask either Dario or Joshua to address it. Um, and then we can just address any questions as we go and Dario since it's here, he can take up, he can take on this, those questions. Uh, and also if you have, if you've used the platform, um, you can share, you can raise your hand and we will we will know that you're part of this and we can celebrate you, if I may. So if you've used the platform um, and you, you're on the, on the audience or part of the participant, you can raise your hand and we can have a quick conversation um, on, on, on where we are with that. I see Saranj, I hope I'm saying your name right. I hope so, um, but we'll get to you in a minute. Uh, let's give Dario a few more minutes to just show us uh, the, the details. I think, but one of the questions we received before was, what data is a hub, a hubs providing uh, brighter intelligence? Or so what data points is the, is, is, is the platform capturing? If you could go into maybe a little bit more details on that so that everybody's aware of the type of data that we would we are inviting them to share for collective co-creation, then I think that could be a good place to continue the conversation. Sure, thanks, Brenda. Um, so 
And then I'll, I'll delve actually into the, the role that Hubs will be also playing in, in, in this collaboration and this cooperation process. So this self-assessment tool that I have actually um, just updated the guidelines with looks at specific milestones or the support um, that each organization is seeking or is, you know, has had um, an, an element of product development. And then with other data points that we've scattered across the company profile, across different tabs, the company will be able to really provide, you know, each user would be really able to provide uh, an understanding of where the company is at and where the co what the company might be looking for. Again, our platform has been used by thousands of organizations from the Gates Foundation to um, Partec. Right. There's a number of investors that use the platform. There's a number of there's a number of foundation, number of government, and so they are actively looking to understanding more and more about the the ecosystem. And we're trying to add as many data points as we can. Obviously, each every time we add a new data, type of data point, we have to do the collection for all of, of those companies. So it's not an immediate process. Right. It's not as soon as we add that data slot, we automatically automatically have that data. And the assessment tool is actually one good example for this because we incentivize instead of being us and our you know our analyst you know having to add those information based on what we gather you know you know the, the, the stage of company to be we incentivize the company to take control of, of their profiles and to specify where they are at so then when people look at their company they can look at you know where the how how complete you know the, the, the profile is and, and you know can get a sense of where the company is at. And so you can see we have uh, questions around the the product and when so we can add a, a data you know timestamp to to that specific um, product development stage whether a company owns uh, intellectual property or patents and um, whether companies generate the revenues then a number of, of very generic milestones would be adding more, but for instance, whether a company is retaining users, is raising funding, it's companies, whether it's building a new technology, um, and we'll be adding dozens more so the company can actually explain what they've achieved so far. We can, we're adding whether a company is currently fundraising and the type of capital that the company is actually looking for, if it's for grants, looking for like $50,000. Uh, we'll look at past participation in HUB program. So let's say companies come to North Africa, um, we can, you know, you, you specify it here. Or whether a company hasn't gone through anything and is looking for acceleration, so looking or, or, or support can explain what type of support the company is actually seeking, okay? When it comes to the data point now, to answer Brenda and anyone um, who's, who's been uh, asking questions around this, so specifically for hubs, hubs have an actually limited number of, of, of data points um, because they actually function somehow as a gateway to the ecosystem. And this is one of the reasons why Brighter has been working massively with hubs all across the, the continent and, and across other markets to, to really get a sense of the type of support and the type of role that this organization can play as a bridge between the ecosystem and the world out there, right? So this is a standard hub profile. You can see that, you know, obviously we have a social media slot, we have impact in case this, this specific um, hub is focused on rural, this specific hub is focused on the informal sector. Um, and then what we have, actually, let me just get Y Combinator so I know, we know that we have, um, we know that we have a, a portfolio, right? Right, so you can look at the hub and you can look at the portfolio. So one of the values of like working alongside the hub is that they give a portfolio update and we can get an understanding of whether you know, the hub is actively investing in companies or actively supporting companies so we can engage them further with the ecosystem that they're working with. Um, and then again, you know, for, for hub managers who 
are interacting with, 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 with the brighter intelligence. We, start, we try to establish a, an ongoing relation, a dialogue, uh, so we can effectively request the hubs um, to interact with their own portfolio and get the portfolio to then add their information on the platform, especially when it comes to early stage organizations. Because the early stage organization are the ones that are the ones that maybe don't have um, a significant um, digital presence on the uh, on in, in general, it's not even on the platform. And so we incentivize them to have access to this because the platform has been used by thousands of people already after just a few months of, of existence, really. And and we want to basically create a second digital life for those organizations. Um, I hope this clarifies a bit. If we want to look a bit in depth into company data points that we want to collect, uh, is the you know and the company um, structure, uh, the the employees, the business you know business model, very very generic data points, but also non-personal. Some some people have asked me about our you know our collection of personal uh, data. We don't collect personal data. We only collect company level data, and we um, we also this is probably not too relevant. We've also built a separate section of our company that it works a bit more as an investment banker. And basically we collect undisclosed information when a company that isn't comfortable disclosing that because what we do with the undisclosed information is basically crunching that anonymously and allow people to and, and this allows us to basically build reports and build market analysis based on the data that we have in a way that is not in, in, you know, intrusive for, for companies. But this is not relevant. What is relevant, though, is that we are, we are not asking for information that, isn't, uh, that shouldn't be out there. So whatever is on the platform is information that companies have decided to put out there. Um, I mean, I could go on and on. I think one of the... What, one of the main interfaces that everyone would benefit um, from is the deals list. So the deals list is being updated every day. Um, it's, it's what powered the African Investment Report 2020 and looks at the funding activity over the last 10 years. It looks at the stage, the amount, the date, the type of, um, and the type of contract, and then the investors. So you can quickly enter a comp an investor profile. For the investors in, 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 in the call here, uh, the investor profile works slightly you know, different from the, the hubs, but also in a very similar way. You also have the portfolios, so you can quickly enter a company profile from the deals, from the deals you go into the, the, um, sec the, the investor, and then from the investor you go into the company profile. Um, I think I think yeah, that, I think that I know, but I think <laughs> the detail is quite something, um, and I think that this shows the amount of information um, that we can we can harness um, uh, uh, we can harness from the platform and uh, what it can do for us. So I think that that's quite clear. Someone has um, as has mentioned that you are viewing the. I mean, the admin backend. So for a normal user, can we just see that? But I'm sure if you go on the platform, you can see, uh, you can see the, the, the interface, what the interface looks like. Same. Yeah, can you maybe get a link on the chat to see what that looks like? Sure, okay, I'll, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll quickly switch to a user profile. Um, so the only difference, I think it's Mercy who asked this, Yes. Um, so the only difference between the paid version and the so the admin, you know, pro version, and and the non-paying version is that you don't have access to a list view, which I haven't even kind of shown you. Um, you have access to everything I've just shown you. So you, you can have access to the to the company's profile. You have access to everything. The only thing. You can search for a, for a for a company directly. You can add something I didn't show you for some reason is actually the crowdsourcing button that is in the main interface where you can add your company or your fund. Um, but everything that I've shown you is uh, is something that free user can actually perform. The only difference is 
a list view that would allow you to see the entirety of the database, right? The free version only allows you to have 15 or 20 um, generated uh, results for each query that you run. But this is not like necessarily your, um, you know, your concern because you can look for companies directly, you can look for hubs directly, you can add as many data points as you want, you can claim ownership over a company is something actually probably I should actually show you in a minute. But like, um, let me sign up with another, yeah, with as another you're profile. That, as you're doing that, maybe Joshua can ask, I can answer the question that Julie has asked on. Um, so we've seen the hub, the hub profile, but what happens if somebody is an SME enabler? So we have a wider just apart from hubs, you have a wider network of SME enablers, uh, other startup enablers. So what uh, data can they share and what would their profile look like? Good point. Actually, um, the, the word hub um, is a broad umbrella term to define SME enablers in general, all right? So as you have actually seen from the um, assessment tool toolkit is that startups can actually choose what types of services they need from, from all these hubs um, to mean all these SME enablers. And this can include, of course, funding, can include mentoring. And for the sake of uh, Mowgli mentoring, that's what they sort of offer. And uh, because it's in line with what they offer as a hub generally, um, then they still qualify to um, to be matched to such um, startups or, or enterprises who need such services. So the word hub is just an umbrella uh, broad term to mean SME enablers in general. So it could be, um, you know, maker spaces, it could be, um, you know, incubation programs, accelerator programs, um, innovation hubs, um, technology parks, et cetera. All right, great. I think that's good. Again, uh, if you have any questions, um, you can send it to me or you can put it on the chat. Again, if you have used your platform, if you have shared the information on the platform, uh, if you have access to the platform as a user, if you could raise your hand up and we can have a quick conversation with you to just see how that is going for you, that would be great. Uh, I'll get to uh, Saranj. Uh, I hope I'm saying your name right. I'm sorry if I'm butchering it. I will, I will allow you to just tell us how to pronounce it. Uh, but yeah, so we'll go to Dario and then go to uh, Saranj and then uh, we'll answer a few more questions. So Dario, you are showing us something. I think I think actually that's Clara who works with us. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a kid from his thing. But yeah, okay. unless Clara, you have any questions for me? And um, so... So this, as I said, is um, the way I've got this, this panel up. So this is the interface, again, for a free user. You can see you don't have all the admin links. Uh, when, you, when you click on the company, you have to upgrade, right? So it gives you the email. You have to explain if you want to upgrade. Um, but you have access to everything else. So you have access to the deals. You have access to, you know, as I showed you before, right? You have access to um, the, the filter. So you can, again, go um, request any, um, you know, you, you, can, you can look it up. You can look whatever, you, whatever, whatever company you, you want directly. You can search. And then what I was mentioning before, actually, there are two points that I, that I missed. One is, again, this um, add your own. So add your company or fund or hub. Um, it opens a blank panel where you can add test rating stages. Um, you know, it can be a company, it can be a hub. This is what Josh was mentioning. So we've added a number of um, terms for, for hubs. So we have innovation hubs, and it's more generic, technology box, uh, venture builders. Um, and, and this should allow basically to have sort of comprehensive uh, number of, of, of labels. By, by all means, please suggest, feel free to suggest more. This is, again, this is like a living infrastructure. 
So this is this is just a few months old. As as, as a few months old person, like this, this can be in, in, improved and this can learn. So the more the more you suggest, the more we can really fine tune what the platform can offer. What I also wanted to show you was, I was saying before, is is the direct access for you know a company a company manager or a founder or an investment. Um, uh, sorry, a fund manager or a hub manager to request control over a specific company. As you can see, I'm filtering by Lori. It shows you the countries of operation in Lori. And it shows you the, the type of product offer. It shows you the, the funding information that we have. Once you go into Lori, you can see that the, under the Lori, you, you, you have two buttons. One is suggest an update in case there are data points that we haven't um, they will have missed or they will have and, and they look a bit mm, odd and then there's a request to manage. When you request to man manage then into my administration profile I get a claim and so it says Dario just requested to manage Lori's profile and if I verify that Dario is actually the, um, someone who can speak on behalf of the company then I guarantee, you know, I grant the admin rights, and this person can um, will find, you know, on the top top right of his or her profile the the company icon, and so this person can can enter the the, the profile and um, effectively edit. As you can see, all the profiles again here. You have the self generated um, competition landscape. You have the assessment. Everything has been broken down into tabs. So it's, it's easy for people to, to, you know, to understand and to navigate. So you can easily switch again from deal to company to company to, to investor and, and from investor to their portfolio, right? Great. There's a question maybe, Daniel. Yeah. Um, can you share info on the investor profiles, e.g. sector, stage of investment, ticket size, portfolio? So can you share info on the investor profiles, uh, e.g. sector, stage? Uh, what do you mean? Who sure. is? Uh, okay. Okay. So the, the information that we look uh, for in, in investor, and when, when you look at investors, uh, let me just switch to investor. Um, it's basically, um, wait, I need to, uh, wait, I need to switch back to my admin. But essentially we look at very basic information. So there's something that is, that is very crucial that I wanna, that I wanna put forward is the fact that you know, companies like Brighton, but many, many others that, that, that play in the same space have usually, um, you know, got to battle with a with with a very strong obstacle, which is the confidential, which is confidential data. The ultimate goal of, of this company is not to play in you know in, in investigator or, or or to try to spot and 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 to make some confidential data public. The goal of companies like ours is to create a transparent and an organized set of information based on what is achievable and collectible out there. So the data points that we collect are the data points that we know we can comfortably um, gather and organize and visualize and project out there. So for instance, when we look at the investors without the need to like switch back, uh, we look at the uh, sort of ticket size range, so minimum and maximum value. We look at the sector and um, geographies of interest. We look at the total fund size. We look at whether an investor is investing in uh, companies that already generate revenues or not, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as you can see, we have the portfolio, the stage of investment, yes, of course. And because we have the filter and the different categories, we've obviously without getting too technical, but basically we've, we've created a single pool for all these, all these data points like sector, state, geography. Um, 
so that when you run the filter and you filter by investor and you filter by fintech, what you're going to find an investor that are focused on fintech. So when you want to run the comparison, we actually have a matching uh, function, but it's simply like the list view of, of, of the main interface. It's a simply different, a different way to visualize it. It allows, to, to, it allows you to filter by whatever sector you might be interested in if you're an investor or you might be filtering by whatever, whatever investor, whatever sector each investor is interested in. So if you're a fintech company, you're looking for an investor investing up to or, or like a minimum of 50K, you can, uh, you can select that and, 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 and um, basically do your search, run your search. The only thing is that if, you, if you're not a paying user, you have 15 list view, um, so sorry, 15 results per, per view per query. But if you play around with the query, that should give you enough data points for, for, for your search. I think you've touched on, uh, thank you, thank you for answering the question, Dario. I think you've touched on something that has come up repeatedly uh, in terms of data privacy um, and, and, and what, we know generally what you're going to do with this data, but I received a few questions that touch on, on, on data. One of them is, so we have co-created this, um, we have co-created this, 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 this data collected, collected and curated. So if Brenda um, from company X decides, uh, you know, I was part of this process. I want to harness me, um, but not just my data that I put on the platform, the data of the 15,000 15, people who put it. So I want to harness that. Uh, how, how do we go about that? Is this data that I've been part of, of developing shared with another third party? or uh, how yeah, just basically is the data shared with the third party and who owns the data after it's collected and curated. And as Brenda, can I, can I request for the collective data? Sure, thanks Brenda. So this is not straightforward and, and for a simple reason. The Brighton Intelligence is built and designed and curates um, hundreds of thousands of data points. And by all means, we want to incentivize um, co-creation and crowdsourcing. And by all means, we want to allow partners who are specifically keen on helping with extra access to our platform. And we do this on a tailored base, on an ad hoc base. By no means everyone on the platform is providing data points for everyone, right? For everyone else. Like they, at, at most they provide data about their company. And the imbalance that there is in this relation is that they have access to a huge pool of data that is curated and constantly updated in exchange for five minutes of their time that might spend into providing data on their platform, on their company. For those who want to help us in, and we have partners who do this in, in different countries across Africa. And for those who want to play like a platform, you know, a role as a, as a platform ambassador in order to have access to extra um, data points or to have access to collaborations or to have access to, to co-authorship with us, by all means, please reach out. Like, obviously we cannot make the platform fully because the platform has hundreds of thousands of data points and thousands of companies and investors and, 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 and requires a, a sustainability in, 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 you know, by design. Uh, we cannot open up the, pre the, premium ver um, the premium version to anyone who adds three data points about our company, right? So for, for those who want to help in a consistent manner and want to help in the longer run, and we know that actually provide a lot of value to the platform because we, they keep adding data. We're very happy to, to collaborate and we already do this with a number of organizations who we've built uh, reports and we've built um, output uh, with. But this is not the case for just a generic user who enters the platform to run a search and maybe claim um, 
you know, control over his or her, her, her platform. Because ultimately, it's us providing the service, right? It's us providing the, the curation. It's us providing the visualization. It's us providing a digestible platform for everyone out there. And this, and this requires a, a way to make this sustainable, right? Um, but we cannot, there would be an imbalance, right? In, in what we provide and what a single user that in, inputs um, five data points would provide. But again, anyone who is actually interested in kind of working more as an ambassador in the longer run and, and really keeping providing data, please do, um, please do reach out. Great. I think I think that uh, clarifies a lot of of some of the queries around data and sh uh, third party sharing and what it means uh, for collective co creation and the role that we all need to play in ensuring that uh, you know the data is as dense as possible. Um, I think I just we have two questions and then I'll I'll allow for um maybe jo joshua to say something uh about um the hubs that he's or rather some of the people that have put their data in there that he's interacted with their feedback and whatnot uh but uh just dario i know we spoke we spoke about this in length um in different occasions but i think i just wanted to highlight a little bit about the benefits of this to the ecosystem and the benefits of this to the entrepreneurs. Because I think there are two levels. There's the level of the entrepreneurship support organization, and then there's a the level um, of the entrepreneur. I think those are the two areas. I know there's a lot more uh, that other people can benefit on, but for us, it's what's the benefit of this to the um, ESOs and also to the entrepreneurs. Just briefly touch on that, and then we'll take one more question. And I think we'll be right on time to close the session after Joshua uh, tells us something. Sure. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to check that. So um, the whole idea behind, you know, curating all these, you know, um, ecosystem diagnostic tools was actually um, to provide a realistic picture about the Kenyan um, ecosystem. Um, if most of you can recall that the initial um, piece of content that we put out there was um, an ecosystem map that highlighted um, ecosystem supporters in Kenya. And most of the feedback that we got is that, hey, why is my, um, why is my program or my organization not on this map? And, and that's sort of also the purpose as to why we are actually having this engagement webinar to also create awareness and you know um, help the partnership you know build a much more comprehensive and accurate picture of the um, support ecosystem in Kenya. So that's one benefit. The second benefit, of course, comes through um, the assessment you know tab that you've just seen. So um, you know quite a number of entrepreneurs are not really sure where to. Uh, to go when it comes to you know accessing um, support for their businesses, so you know a number are, are, have an idea that they should you know go for business incubation and or acceleration etc. Um, but they are not accurately informed as to the specifics of some of these um, you know support programs. So specifics as to stages, um, as to location, et cetera. So uh, we believe that this uh, assessment and diagnostic will provide a data-driven um, you know, matching to um, EOSOs, thereby creating you know, uh, what we see as perceived pipeline, pipeline that is informed as to what um, this support organization can offer. Great, um, I think that captures it really well. Um, Dario, I think I'll direct the next question to you. Um, so we've talked about, oh, I don't, yeah, we've talked about the pre version and the pro version. Uh, we talked about the differences and, and what each offers. I don't know if you want to share how much, uh, the pro version costs, uh, that way, if anybody's on the call and they want to access that, then we, we know. Sure. I mean, I didn't even mention this because, as I said, 
with startups, VCs, and 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 uh, I mean some some VCs might might pay for it, but uh, but and hubs, we very much have um, an a peer to peer relation where we try to provide value um, to each other and 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 access and um, and collaborations. As Josh mentioned, this whole um, partnership was launched um, alongside a map that we developed at no cost. This was, this was a map that we built and that we put out there and, uh, and that we built on, of, on the back of the data that we had and of the uh, back of the data that we had curated as a public good. And the idea would be to then we start collaboration, on, an ongoing collaboration with, with hubs and, and with the support ecosystem uh, in order to create even better um, output, right? even better infographics, even better reports. The platform costs two thousand five hundred dollars a year um, for the pro version, but I don't think this is uh, of interest. Um, again, hubs are not our target for for this um, for this type of insight. Um, we want to establish a peer to peer relation with with the ecosystem, which is something that we've done since twenty eighteen, since before the platform was even out there, when we were collaborating with the hubs and co author. Okay. Our ecosystem map okay. with the uh, with the um, but happy to to answer any any question. Great, I think that that's 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 totally okay. Um, it's good because just looking at the platform um, and coming from um, this ecosystem and seeing the amount of information that I am sharing and what is given back to me, then I think. Uh, we, it's safe to say that hubs uh, the pro sorry the 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 standard version captures uh, or would address a lot of our needs um and i think that reiterated the same where it's not the the pro version hubs are not basically who they're looking to engage on that level so i think it's that's totally totally fine i'm happy to take any last or last question but i think that has covered a lot of the of, of the of the concerns that we've had in terms of data sharing what data points are required i don't think we've been able to uh we've been able to to really get into the details of what the platform can do and i'm delighted that this this workshop has allowed us to have that conversation to see what data what, what data points we're sharing to look at the benefits for the for the ecosystem, for hubs, for entrepreneurs, um, and I think that's that would be a good point to end it. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you, Dario and Joshua, for sharing the and answering our questions. Um, I would invite uh, Grace, our board secretary, to say a quick hello and quick goodbye <laughs> to the partners and 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 uh and participants and then we can end the session awesome thank you brenda uh, i want to thank writer intelligence for this wonderful session um it's going forward to you know show us the mandate that ASEC has on creating some awareness around the ecosystem driving some collaboration and some representation and this gives us a platform where we are able to do that and drive that peer-to-peer -peer relationship so i encourage all of us to get on this platform so that we have the you know, uh, information that's centralized is easy to access and that will drive the data that we need to make clear decisions and pushes in this ecosystem. So thank you for the members who've made it today. Thank you so much and let's keep this spirit going. We appreciate you making the time to join and God bless, have a great day. Thank you. One last request, uh, someone has said we need a picture. So if you're comfortable turning on your camera and you can screenshot this, that's how we're taking pictures in 2021. So if you're comfortable uh, turning on your camera and then we can take a screenshot and you'll be able to, you know, say we were here. So glad, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, so just a few more people to turn on their cameras. That would be good, great, fantastic, awesome, awesome stuff. Great. We have two or three more people who please turn on your cameras. I'm asking nicely. So that's <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Two more people.
two more people turn on the cameras. Okay, okay. Let me see. I hope um, we can take it as is. You need to look good. So make sure your hair is looking nice and everything. I'm just going to take a screenshot. Um, I hope it works. I am sure it will work. Let me see. So great. Uh, we, have, we have two slides. So let me go to the next slide. Smile. Like if, you're, if you think you're in the next slide, smile. <laughs> uh, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, so good to talk to you. We'll send you a calendar of our activities. If you're an ASAC member and you feel you want to contribute to any of our conversations, please reach out. Our email is info at asec.ke. My email is brenda.kibiku at asec.ke. We are doing mem member spotlights. So we come to you, we have a conversation, we get to know you, we get to know the services that you're offering, and we can highlight that or spotlight that to the rest of the memberships. We've made amazing connections between members who are working in different sectors but have identified areas of collaboration and I think that is what our network should be. Uh, so please do reach out and we would be happy to have a conversation with you and get to know you um, and learn from each other. Um, and yes, thank you for taking the time. Reach out if you need Brenda, if, I can, if I can just jump in 20 seconds. If, if the message wasn't out, we with ASIC and UK Canada Cab, we will be building if, like two freely available reports about the Kenyan ecosystem this spring and at the, the, the end of this year. And this will be an ongoing uh, effort. So this is also one of the values collecting that I, I think I forgot to mention this, but, <laughs> but this is one of the underlying uh, sort of soft messages of this. The, the first map got some pushback naturally because some people were not on, on it. Uh, that map was a, was a conversation starter. And so, now you're all being warned. You all probably receive an email uh, after this with a bit of a summary about everything that's been discussed. Um, so let's make you know the next, the next output a real collaborative one. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but thank you for taking the time. We're so excited to have you. Uh, and yeah, right. Uh, okay, we're two minutes into time, but. Thank you. Have a lovely rest of your day. Uh, be productive and yeah, peace out. Bye.